Good morning, Phantom Crew. Today is uh, Wednesday, 29th of April, and uh, I am at uh, Marigot Bay in uh, Saint Martin, where I have been at anchor for about seven weeks. Today, finally, I'm going to hoist the anchor and set sails uh, for the Azores. It's going to be solo voyage. Uh, by far the longest uh, I have ever done, and that's because of the coronavirus. Uh, but I need to get back uh, to Joan, my wife, um, in Denmark, uh, before the start of the hurricane season. So um, my weather router in the US has uh, informed me that today would be a good day to start. So um, I'm going to make my last preparations and then set sails. As you see, there's no wind at the moment. There was a lot of wind and rain last night, but uh, just now there's no wind. I'm sure it'll come later. So I've set the mainsail and I'm now calibrating the log in this beautiful water and uh, it's bye bye to St. Martin after nearly seven weeks at anchor. Thank you for your hospitality. I wish I could have seen more of the island. That'll have to be some other time. So this is what it looks like when you are approaching a squall on the radar see lots of specks here we're in the center and um, the alarm is going because i've set up a sector alarm to uh, warn me uh, when I, as what was approaching so i better go and close the hatch now weather data is great um, but there are certainly also issues uh, to do with the weather data and there are some technical issues that i'll return to shortly but there are other issues as well. Uh, for example, there are many different mathematical models for how the weather is going to be. Which one are you going to use? Uh, how are you going to interpret that model? Uh, also, your own personal skill in reading these files. Is it really good enough? You could make, what if you make a wrong call or you make a wrong kind of reasoning based on what you see on a chart? Uh, how can you... Um, mitigate against that error. So you yourself as the user, you are a risk in the system. So what I chose to do to, uh, to mitigate that risk, the human factor, was to make an arrangement with a weather router. His name is Chris Parker. He's widely used. He's um, a guy in the US who helps people to cross the Atlantic Ocean, has done it for many years. So I did that uh, really for a different reason, namely because since this was going to be my first crossing of an ocean, maybe the only one as a solo sailor, uh, I did not want to have this extra level of complexity to make all the weather routing all the time. So I hired Chris Parker to guide me across the ocean. He has all the weather data from many different models. He has much more experience than I do. And yes, I still want to download weather files and do my own little local optimizations but I wanted some somebody behind me who really knew this stuff professionally to um, to guide me it turned out and I hadn't realized I apologize for all the noise uh, but um, uh, it turned out that this uh, precaution I I had with um, uh, recruiting a, a weather router was good for a completely different reason namely that he would still have access to data even if I, for some reason, would not have access to the same uh, uh, data that I'm usually familiar with. So uh, that's a general point that sometimes when you, when you um, do something out of caution in one area of risk, you can be lucky that that very same thing actually also reduces risk in another area. So the risk of overburdening yourself or the risk of making a wrong call on data, which was the one I was worried about, <coughs> I mitigated by recruiting <coughs> a professional. 
And I hadn't realized that that was actually also mitigating a different kind of risk, namely me not being able to do the calculations and the computations that I normally can do when the equipment works. So uh, now let's turn to the actual weather system, uh, the, not the weather system, but the equipment I use for weather routing on Kaka and some of the security issues that are with that and how I address them. So my uh, system for getting weather data is um, consists of three electronic devices. Uh, there is the computer, which is a, a laptop, which I bought specifically for sailing in the sense that it doesn't use very much power. It doesn't have a movable hard disk that can get destroyed by salt and things like that. So, so that's a, a computer that's relatively good for what I'm going to use it for. Then here is a satellite phone, which I've borrowed from Klaus, one of our friends. The satellite phone works almost everywhere on Earth, and I use it as a modem. That is, I connect it to the computer via this cable. And then there's a procedure where I can send a mail uh, to um, a service on the Internet through the uh, phone here. And um, then I can download a weather file through to this computer and I can show this uh, weather file on the map here covering the area that I intend to sail uh, for the, the coming days. But on top of that there's also something called weather routing software and in my setup I have that on my phone. The phone is what I use to record this video so uh, you'll have to imagine my phone. But what's important is that I need to get the uh, the weather file is called a grip file from the computer to the phone and I normally use a cable here to transfer the file and uh, then I can use an app on my phone called SailGrip to do weather routing which is suggesting or, or calculating the optimal way of sailing relative to that particular weather forecast so that I won't have to sail in too rough weather or too little wind. There are lots of parameters you can set up to uh, determine how um, you want to sail. So the worst kind of thinking about this would be to say, OK, I'm all set. I've got my mobile phone, I've got my computer, I've got, my, uh, I've got uh, the set phone, so I'm good to go. All right. So what are you going to do when some of these systems fail? And you can be sure they will. So let's go through this. So what happened to me uh, yesterday was that a, um, a cable failed. So the connection between the computer and the phone, uh, which um, should give, so I should get the data transfer there. It, the, there's something wrong with the, uh, with the, connections here, they don't actually transfer data properly. You have to sort of wiggle it and sometimes it's, there's a connection, sometimes it's not good. Um, and in the end I, I just had to give up. I just couldn't get data across. So you may think, okay, well, that's simple. Just send it as an email or something. No, remember you're off the internet, so you can't just send a file. Uh, well, there's Bluetooth on the computer, there's Bluetooth on the phone. Fine, I'll send it via Bluetooth. No. It so happens that the phone does not allow transfer of files with the suffix GRB, which is what grip files have. It, maybe it's a security issue, I don't know. So you can't transfer it that way. Luckily, um, there's a slot in the phone for an SD card, and I had a spare SD card with me. That was not an accident. It's something I might always need, I thought, so I had that in my box of stuff. So I could put the SD card in the computer, copy the file onto that, move it to the uh, phone and get my weather prediction. All right. So I was lucky or I've been sensible in uh, having extra bits and pieces that could be used. So in this case, an SD card that could be used if the other one failed. But what would I do? That's the next step. What will I do if there's no way I can get data to my phone and do the weather routing? Well, I'll do without the weather routing. I will see what's on the computer. I see roughly what should I stake 
clear off so there's some uh, red area up here which means a lot of wind so I'll just know roughly when I should avoid being there because I can check through the times and see what to see here what's going to happen with the wind also there's some very light winds here I want to avoid so I can get a rough idea not as good as if I have weather routing but I can get a some idea of how I should plan my sailing by just stepping through this uh, map. Uh, but what if the computer fails, or the connection between the computer and the sat phone, or the sat phone fails? What am I going to do then? Um, well, that's that's when you then go to OK. So I don't get specific weather information, but there's still a lot of knowledge about uh, routes you you can sail when and where. So I bought this book. It's a classic, Jimmy Connell's World Cruising Routes. And it contains heaps of routes, including the ones I'm sailing, where it suggests when to sail and rough waypoints you should choose depending on the season and what problems to expect and an argument for why you should choose those waypoints relative to uh, common weather patterns that time of year in that part of the world. And of course, now we're assuming that the computer is down, the sat phone is down, so you still need a paper map. So here I have a, a, an old-fashioned nautical map, and I have um, I have a compass and ruler and everything you need to to just do all the navigation on the map. In in case the electronic things go down, there's a whole se separate business of what do you do if your GPS systems go down. I, I'll not get, go into that today, but suffice to say that there is also a sextant on board Kaka. In any case. So, um, so you have to think through what are you going to do when things fail and then have at the back of the mind, well, what's the bare minimum I need to get fairly safely from A to B? And in this case, it's really a paper map um, and a logbook. You'll notice here that I have my logbook written out on paper because I also type it into the computer but now we're thinking what happens if the computer fails. I need the logbook with the positions in it so I write down here where I was at a particular point so here you see some position information from this morning and uh, and then I know that <clears throat> if the computer fails and uh, I don't and all my other GPS systems fail I'll still know at that particular point that's where I was I can take my map and I can then do some basic uh, calculations of how I should sail to get in, in roughly to where I want to get to. So that's sort of the 1970s technology here, or you could also say 1700s technology, with this knowledge that was built up uh, during the French and the British Empire, and uh, the maps that, that came from that time as well. And that's really stuff that still works. You just need to know how to use it. And then you have all these other gadgets, uh, which are great on top of them uh, when they work, which they often do, but sometimes they don't. And I experienced that yesterday, and that's why I thought I, sh I should make this little video about that. Day six of the journey. Uh, sunrise. You can see it's a beautiful morning, but there is absolutely no wind. Uh, we are in the latitude known as the horse latitudes because in the old days when the sailing ships had no engine uh, when they were become they sometimes had to kill horses due to uh, shortage of drinking water in these latitudes because there is often just no wind at all and that's the case here too so uh, at four o'clock in the morning I turned on the engine and uh, I had reached uh, 28 degrees uh, north and uh, I shouldn't go further than 30 degrees north because then there can be strong winds. So I'm going to keep in this belt between 28 and 30 degrees north. And I got to that belt uh, at about 61 degrees uh, 30 minutes west, uh, which is about the longitude of the border between uh, uh, Guyana and Venezuela, I believe. In any case, um, and here we are at the uh, latitude of uh, Jacksonville in the US and uh, Agadir uh, in Africa. So 
still some way to go to, to come home. So I've just turned uh, the boat at 4 o'clock in the morning, turned on the engine and uh, um, we, we turned this corner and we're now no longer heading north, we are heading in a north-easterly direction uh, towards uh, the Azores. So uh, from now on the time zones will be changing, uh, so that will be exciting. And um, I'll be motoring all day today, I expect, and then it'll be interesting to see whether there'll be some wind to sail on tomorrow. Hello Phantom Shipmates, today is Wednesday the uh, 6th of May, so it's the ninth day of the passage across the Atlantic. And um, yesterday was um, the second time I, uh, I became uh, becalmed, so around 9 o'clock in the evening all the wind just disappeared and I had to take down the sails. I had already spent 25% of my diesel, so I didn't want to start the engine again, so I decided to wait it out and wait for wind. I took down the sails and the waves were awful. They were just tossing me and Kaka all over the place. So after a couple of hours I couldn't take any more of it. So I got on deck and rolled out a bit of Genoa and made, made us drift in a more controlled manner. Then this morning it was still very light winds, <clears throat> about four to five knots of wind. And I decided, well, um, why don't I have a go at putting up the Jenica. I haven't used it at all. Uh, since I left Denmark and this uh, is the kind of weather where it might be useful I thought so um, I did and here she is and uh, hope you can see this it's uh, beautiful and we are plowing along with 5.5 uh, knots at the moment on 6.4 knots of true wind speed so it's a huge success and I'm hoping that uh, by having this sail on and sailing like this, I can actually outrun the um, strong winds that are that are catching up on me. So uh, it's uh, from now on, from now on till Friday, it's a race against time. Will I be able to get far away, uh, far enough away that uh, I won't get too much uh, of these strong winds that I, I expect to see uh, on Friday? We shall see. Hello Phantom Shipmates, uh, so um, today uh, I want to tell you about the cold front that uh, I passed uh, last night. I had been trying to sail away from it for days and the idea in doing that is uh, the longer you can outrun it, uh, the, the weaker it becomes. But uh, eventually it caught up with me and uh, I had to bite the bullet and, and get on with it. So um, I sailed uh, yesterday uh, and the wind speeds were building steadily um, and I was sailing most of the day in sort of 18, 19, 20 knots of wind which is, which is fine, it's a lot of wind, it's a bit tiring but it's fine. And then uh, came the night and um, what happens when a cold front passes is that the wind begins to change direction. So it came from the southwest and gradually it veers, that is, it turns uh, clockwise, goes to the west and to the northwest and to the north, eventually to, to the northeast. And that whole process takes about um, six to twelve hours, I think it took. Um, and uh, it turns out as well, and I didn't have that data, that the wind speed picks up as well. Uh, when you approach the point where it really veers. So uh, suddenly I found myself in, in, in the dark. I already had uh, two um, reefs in the mainsail to be cautious and suddenly I was sailing in uh, 31 knots of wind and it was crazy, it was really wild. So there was no way around it, I had to 
buckle up and uh, get my life jacket on and my uh, security lines and crawl onto deck and, and get the sail down. So I, um, I got the main sail down and uh, that went very well actually. It was just crazy. It was wild. Um, but, but no problems. Uh, it, it went as it should. And uh, then I sailed on on a third Genoa alone for the rest of the night. And then uh, I was actually quite pleased with myself because uh, uh, it had gone it had gone quite well. It had been a lot of work because the wind changes direction all the time, so you can't ever get any rest. You have to uh, change the sail uh, settings. You have to change. The, the, the wind vane has to be adjusted, you have to keep up the navigation, all of these things uh, keep you awake. So I was exhausted uh, when, when it got to me. So by that time, the wind was now coming out of the uh, uh, northwest. So I started uh, tacking close hold north um, to, to get further north and, and hit the southwesterlies, which should take me to the Azores. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm sailing uh, close to the wind, close hold, as it's called, uh, against fairly big waves. So it's slamming and banging all the time. You may be able to hear it. Uh, it's all part of the fun. But it's going in the right direction, and I'm very relieved that I got through that cold front. I now understand why um, people um, try to avoid them. Something else happened, of course, this morning. I, was, uh, I wanted to fix a pump we have in the forward uh, toilet. The pump it pumps out water from the uh, sink and the shower, but it wasn't pumping anything. And while I fixed that, it wasn't terribly difficult, but while I did that, I noticed that was a leak in the bilge pump. That is serious, because the bilge pump is the pump you use to pump out water if by some accident water gets into the boat. So that I had to fix right away. And um, fortunately, I have brought spare parts with me for just that kind of job. Except it wasn't exactly the right spare parts. It was a wrong dimension hose. But I then found some other hose somewhere else in the boat and cut a piece of that and uh, put it into the bilge pump and tied the whole thing up. And um, it now works and it's, it's, it's a super good job. So I'm very, very pleased with it. But it's just typical that when you're the most exhausted, something turns up that you absolutely have to deal with. That's the world of sailing. Anyway, I was so disgusted with the whole thing that I, uh, I just uh, disregarded all my principles about uh, fresh water rationing and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> granted myself a shower, uh, which I haven't had uh, since I left. You may have noticed that in some of the previous videos. But uh, it's, not a, it's not a fashion statement, it's, it's just because if you live on three liters of water per day, you have to, something have, has to give, you know, and uh, shaving and uh, washing your hair is, is one of these things. So anyway, I feel very pleased that I got through the cold front. I feel happy that uh, I fixed the two pumps and that I, uh, I, I, I was, I, and that I granted myself a shower. So, a good day after all. Saturday afternoon. It's now uh, less than uh, 24 hours ago I, I passed the front, the cold front, and typical of sailing. It's as if everything is forgotten. We're in uh, this uh, nice environment now. We're bobbing along at four knots of speed, close hold, uh, sunny weather. Not a worry in life, you know. It's it, the contrasts are just so stark. It's really quite interesting. Hello, Phantom Shipmates. It's uh, Sunday, 10th of May, around noon, and uh, as you may be able to hear, the engine is running, despite the fact that it seems to be a lovely day for sailing. So, what's going on here? Normally, I'm. Uh, very reluctant to turn on the engine if I can help it. Well, the thing is, I got a new uh, weather forecast from my weather router, Chris Parker, this morning, and it sort of assumes that I am at a certain point at a certain time. And uh, well, I wasn't at that point at that time, so I'm now trying to get myself to the point where my route for the next five days starts. 
And the reason that this is important is that the weather systems change so quickly around here that if, if you're not in the right place at the right time, you know, you, you miss an opportunity or you suddenly end up without any wind because the planning is quite uh, narrow. You know, you really have to navigate the precisely the right point at the right time. So I hate to do this. I hate to turn on the engine. I've already motored yesterday. Uh, turned on the engine in the evening and I, and I uh, motored till four o'clock in the morning. Then I tried to sail under the Guinea because I had such great success with that the other day. It didn't work on this angle of attack. <laughs> so I, I received this report and now I have to motor for another 12 hours just to get myself to the point where I can start sailing at much less wind than this. But then it'll be consistent with the, the plan that's made. So it's a little bit annoying, but, but um, um, that's all part of being part of it. That's all part of, of having somebody else help you. You have to then stick to what they say, otherwise they don't have a chance uh, helping you. So um, we'll see how it goes. Two o'clock Sunday, so you will notice that things have changed. We are now on the sail. Uh, that's because uh, the wind increased unexpectedly, a very pleasant surprise. Uh, so I could uh, turn off the engine and, and hoist the sails and still keep the same speed towards my uh, schedule. So we'll see how long that lasts, but uh, I'm enjoying it for as long as it lasts. You see, I'm using the electric autopilot to steer the boat now, because it has greater precision than the wind pilot. And I, I really need to get this absolutely right. This uh, autopilot uses a lot of power, but it's a sunny day and we have the solar panels and they can produce all the power that uh, the autopilot needs and everything else in the boat will be um, when it's a day like this. So, um, great stuff. Good morning, Phantom Shipmates. Today is uh, Wednesday, the 13th of May. Day 15 of the crossing from uh, St. Martin to the Azores. And um, last time I recorded something on the video was uh, three days ago, Sunday. And uh, if you remember, it was a glorious day. Um, beautiful weather. It looks quite different now. It looks a lot more like home, really. Because what happened was that at the end of uh, Sunday, the wind died and uh, I had to turn on the engine and then basically I went through another uh, frontal passage uh, of a cold front and uh, I uh, sailed right through it so it was another night of really hard work but the whole point of doing this is that I'm trying to go up north or I was trying to go up north because now I'm here and I succeeded uh, to catch a weather system um, a low pressure actually, which is going to propel me almost all the way to the Azores. That was the plan. And the exciting thing about doing that is that you have to hit it at exactly the right time. It's almost like, a, you know, when they throw the satellites around the planets uh, to give them extra speed. It's a little bit like this. You, you, uh, you, you find a frontal system that serves you right, and then you have to hit it at the right time. And then it'll carry you, if everything goes as planned. Uh, so uh, even just approaching that weather system is interesting because the wind changes direction as you get closer and as the weather system moves. So I um, discussed this with the weather router and, and he gave me some good advice and uh, I, I made the right tactical decisions and it just worked out beautifully. But it did involve a whole night of beating into the waves at 18 knots and it was uh, it was really exhausting that's why I didn't film anything either uh, so uh, uh, eventually on yesterday morning that's on Tuesday morning I got to the point far enough north at the right time where the wind just changed direction exactly as I had hoped so now I'm on a much more comfortable ride there's still a lot of wind, um, 18 knots or so, but it's coming from behind and it's uh, totally easy to sail.
sail and I can just um, enjoy the view, adjust the wind pilot and adjust the sails every now and again, uh, now and again, and uh, I've caught up on my sleep as well, which was uh, getting to become a problem. So the plan from now on is pretty simple. Uh, ride this low pressure uh, for all that's in it, uh, as close to the source as I can. I hope I can get almost there because I'm running a bit low on fuel um, and I don't want to get stuck in the Atlantic with no wind and no fuel. So uh, I'll have a discussion with Chris Parker about how we're going to solve that one. But um, so far so good. It's, it's a brilliant day of sailing. what it looks like when Kaka is doing between 8 and 9 knots on a beautiful day of sailing on a beam bridge in the Atlantic Ocean, 14th of May 2020. On approach to Porta and the Azores, I think we have about 600 nautical miles left. Good morning, Phantom shipmates. Friday the 15th of May, a day which has a special significance uh, to me in the 15th of May because four years ago on 15th of May we uh, left Kokkola in Finland uh, on Kaka. Uh, we had just bought uh, the November or uh, December um, year before and uh, we started sailing back to Denmark on a 940 trip. Bitterly cold. Uh, that's four years ago today. And uh, here I am uh, on the Atlantic Ocean by myself this time um, in the approach to uh, the Azores. I've just had a weather report from uh, Chris Parker and um, he says that I should be able to go all the way to uh, essentially without motoring, um, which is fantastic news because I don't have that much uh, diesel left. And I must say, these uh, last couple of days have got to be one of the most amazing sailing experiences I've had all my life. I'm on this uh, beam reach, uh, 18, 19 knots of wind, and the uh, Kaka is just plowing along. Seven knots, eight knots. Today I even saw 10.3 knots on, on the GPS briefly. Uh, so it's fast sailing. It's very comfortable uh, and it's exciting. It's, it's just fun. And there's also a sense of relief that uh, I have actually plotted now the last waypoints uh, for the entire trip to water. So I feel like I'm on the uh, last stretch now even though there is still 500 nautical miles to go so it's not like it's over but it is uh, it's a very very good feeling and I'm so happy that I get to experience this. I didn't plan it like this but uh, it's, it's an amazing adventure. Hello Phantom shipmates. Today is uh, Saturday 16th of May. And as you can see, the fun is over. 
I'm becalmed again. I was up all night uh, through the uh, last bit of the nice wind I had just to get everything out of it I could before the wind would die and the front passed in the night and it was very dramatic. It, I was sailing quite nicely with um, 19 knots of wind and in fact I was down resting for low and suddenly the whole boat went crazy and I looked at the instruments and it was 32 knots of wind and it was just instantaneous you know it was just wham and of course in those conditions the wind pilot won't uh, keep the course so the boat goes into the wind and the sails are flapping and I have to put on my uh, foul weather gear because it's raining and uh, blowing and put on my all the safety equipment and all that it takes time and meanwhile the, the boat is like it's falling to pieces anyway i got up on deck and uh, got the genoa furled in and uh, got the boat under control and and then i was basically up for the rest of the night uh, trying to ride through this thing so i was really exhausted this morning and now the wind is gone there wasn't supposed to be no wind just here according to any of the forecasts I have, but um, there you are. And um, I have 345 nautical miles uh, to um, to water in the Azores. Not very much compared to what I've sailed so far, but uh, there's still some ways to go. And I suspect that I'm going to be here for a while, for some hours at least, until the wind uh, picks up again. So. Nothing I can do about it, just taking down the sails. And as you can see, the waves are throwing us around here, but uh, that's life in the Atlantic Ocean. Good morning, Phantom Shipmates. It is 6.42 in the morning of Tuesday, the 19th of May, and I see land. After three weeks at sea, I see land. And it's Sila de Fayal where water is, so uh, I can now see an end to it, which I'm really happy about because last night was the worst. The forecast was for moderate winds, 17 to 20 knots. We had more than 30 sustained, and it was awful. I, in the end, I pulled down the cells and just uh, turned on the engine and, uh, and uh, stayed on today. Uh, for hours, so um, it's been about nine hours of poetry. Absolutely, I fell during breakfast and hit my arm, which comes on top of my already inflamed leg. So I really need to get to harbor and uh, see a doctor and uh, relax. The problem is they want to send you on within 48 hours, and I can't imagine how I'm going to do that. Um, but. Uh, I have to get safely to water and then we'll deal with the authorities later on. You are looking at Ilha do Fayal, the island where Porto is situated. It's just around the corner. I have to go over there, around, and then uh, there's, there's Porto. I have uh, taken down the sails. It's a long story, but it was a dreadful night. Too much wind much more than forecast, so I ended up taking down the sails. I've been going by motor a lot and then a little bit of sailing as well on the Genoa. I've got my courtesy flags up, the Azores on the top, Portugal below, and then there you get it, and then the quarantine flag, the Q flag at the bottom. So, and we've got the, the Danish flag up. I packed that away while I was in the middle of the Atlantic. It was just a nuisance. Um, and, uh, and that's it. I really look forward to, to seeing what uh, water, this legendary place of sailors is really like. Uh, 
Hello Phantom Shipmates, I think it's time for an update from Kaka. It's uh, Tuesday today and it's a week ago uh, today exactly that I arrived in Horta. I've had a week to um, uh, recover from, from the trip. Uh, my foot is a lot better, so um, I will stay for another week or so, I think, and then leave at the first opportunity when there is uh, good weather to sail on to France. And uh, while I've been here, I've um, had three visits to the docks of the Portuguese. have been fantastic. I haven't paid a cent. And uh, they have seen me three times. I've uh, been given prescription for extra drugs to fill up my medicine box. And uh, I've been doing a ton of boat jobs. They have the most fantastic yacht service here in Walter. Um, so I've been doing so much work on the boat that it will probably take me months to do it at home. But because there is such excellent service here with really first-rate professionals, it goes very quickly. Um, so it's been an absolutely fantastic stay. Only pity is I haven't been able to go ashore. Behind me you may be able to see Cafe Sport. It's a legendary cafe run for three generations by the same family. And um, we can't go ashore and go and have a beer there, but uh, Peter's Cafe is delivering goods to the boats in, in dinghies. So you get a sense of the unique atmosphere that's here and it's uh, really thoroughly enjoyable. I would like to come here again when uh, things have become more normal. So thank you very much to the Azores and to Walter for a super time here. Hello Phantom Shipmates, it's uh, Thursday the 28th of uh, May and as you can see I'm at sea again. I decided to change plans because the weather is not really suitable for going to Cherbourg in the foreseeable future. So instead I'm heading out uh, in the Atlantic Ocean in the general direction of uh, northern Portugal, um, northern Spain and we'll see where the wind takes me. I should be at sea for days. Um, maybe I'll go to Bayona. I'd like to see Bayona. It would be interesting. Uh, so meanwhile, here I am in the, uh, in the assault still. Behind me you have uh, Ila de Payal, where Portugal is. Then uh, behind me, up there, Pico. And uh, over here in front, we have uh, So um, I'm very centrally placed in the Azores here and uh, I'm looking forward to some good days at sea. Hello Phantom Shipmates, <coughs> it is Sunday afternoon and I uh, am uh, now in, a area, in an area with not much wind and that's because I've been chasing this low pressure that was forming <coughs> in order to sail south um, and have it be north of me so that it'll slingshot me towards either Portugal or Spain. And I believe that what I'm showing you here is actually the center of that low pressure area. You see the clear sky in the center and then all around you have uh, clouds. So I'm lying just very close to the center really and uh, 
uh, having very little wind. The idea being that I'll wait it out here till the uh, um, worst of the uh, strong winds are over. And after that I will um, uh, change direction and go instead of now where I'm going I'm going southeast I will go north east that's the plan hello phantom shipmates today is uh, Monday the 1st of June in fact uh, it's a year ago exactly that uh, we left Skolsbua um, on this uh, journey so we're one year into it now and if you look around, it all looks pretty boring here. There's no wind and it's sort of overcast and it actually continues all the way around the horizon here. Um, but it's in fact anything but boring. The thing is, there's a lot of nasty weather in the Atlantic Ocean at the moment. Um, and I'm hiding in the most unlikely of all places, namely in the dead center of a huge anticyclic rotating low pressure. So if you go um, to the periphery of this low pressure system, it's blowing 20 knots sustained, uh, gusting to 40. Uh, so pretty nasty stuff. For right where I am, there's absolutely no wind. And uh, that's why you can hear the engine running. There's about three knots of wind. Uh, it's 12 noon. And that coincides, interestingly, with just uh, reaching the center of this uh, low pressure. So within um, an hour, the wind direction has changed from very weak um, north-easterly wind to now coming out of the uh, southeast. And uh, just going to continue motoring down for another 10 hours, something like that, until I'm uh, out of the dead center of the low pressure and by then the wind should pick up a little bit I should be on the south southern side of the low pressure <clears throat> and I should be able to get winds that will carry me towards uh, the European continent <coughs> now whether I end up in Portugal or in Spain is unknown at this point in time it doesn't matter too much either um, my main goal is to get to the European continent uh, safely and um, the plan to do that is to wait here till uh, the uh, low pressure is done with all of its sound and fury signifying nothing as Shakespeare would have put it and then uh, uh, make my way out of this spiral and uh, just uh, sail quietly maybe motoring there might not be a lot of wind um, towards uh, whatever country <laughs> is appropriate. So that's that's the kind of planning you do when you're in the middle of the ocean. It's very interesting actually, I'm enjoying it a lot. So one year since we started today. Greetings to everyone. Hello Phantom Shipmates. It's uh, the 3rd of June today. And uh, as you can see, I'm in very calm seas. It's, the sun is about to set. It's a lovely evening. There's hardly any wind. Um, and uh, it's been like that ever since I left the low pressure. The uh, tactic of staying in the low pressure um, while it um, was busy making noise all around me was uh, uh, worked. Uh, so I could just uh, get out of there quietly and move into this kind of wind, which is very, very little wind. So I've been practicing light wind sailing uh, all day. Much more difficult than, uh, than sailing with when there's plenty of wind. So some of the tricks I've come up with is uh, putting a boom preventer in an unusual place. Uh, you may be able to see it uh, there. Yes, it's going down here quite far behind in the boat. And there's an, a boom, boom preventer. and. I've also sheeted the uh, Genoa way back, much further back than I normally do. And that uh, seems to work really nicely as well. See the sail is a uh, really beautiful curve and the sheet is way back. So um, although there's just uh, 
let me see, we have we have uh, five knots of uh, wind because we're sail sailing fairly close to the wind it actually relative wind above six and we are doing three knots um, now if <coughs> if I continue doing three knots from now on I'll be out here for weeks so um, I I hope this is a temporary thing but it's interesting to try and uh, I am getting to see a lot of the Atlantic Ocean <laughs> this way. I've been as far down now on this trip as the southern tip of Portugal almost. And I'm now sailing up uh, past the coast of Portugal. Uh, the plan is to see if we can get all the way up to La Coruña in Spain. Um, and that'll probably take the better part of another week. So this has turned out to be a, a much longer journey than I thought. And I can see my, my provisions as well are beginning, beginning to be a little bit... Uh, um, depleted but uh, I have enough food I'll get by uh, and uh, it's an interesting experience I have a visitor a swallow just came out to see in fact it just went into the cabin in the saloon and flew around in there and now it's out here and uh, I wonder what it wants to do does it want to come and stay on the boat oh, whoops <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome little swallow. <laughs> Come and stay. You're welcome. Yes, you can get a free ride. Free ride. Absolutely free. Yes, we're friendly. Everybody on board is very friendly. You'll like it here. Uh, doesn't, it wasn't convinced. Just had dolphins come up as well. There we are. Lovely. First the swallow and then the dolphins. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you guys for coming to cheer me up. Well, I don't think you're actually coming to cheer me up, but uh, that's the effect it has. There you go. They're so graceful. And the bird down here. Hello, bird. How are things? Dolphins out here. Are we going to get a whale as well? Like I had the other day. That's a little bit too exciting for my taste actually. Just 25 meters in front of me. There's certainly a lot of fun going on here at sunset. There's a right party going on. Dolphins, the swallow, everything. There's the swallow. Where are the dolphins? Oops. Yeah, they're probably out in front of the bow. I don't want to go with them wearing my knife vest. There's one. Beautiful. Oh, they're so graceful. Look at that. Get very close. Ooh. Hi, hi, my guy. Do you like caca? You are very welcome. Hi. What's going to happen now? Are you going to ride with me to Spain? Thinking about it. Eh? I've put out food for you. You can take. Ah. <laughs> uh. No, I didn't. It's still sitting there.
Phantom Ship mates. Apologies for all the wind noise that there will be on this clip. But today is uh, Thursday, 4th of uh, June. And uh, you see what a different day of sailing this is compared to last night. What happened was that uh, the wind died. Uh, there was hardly any wind uh, last night. And then um, came grey clouds and um, rain. And then the wind came. And uh, this is it. We are making our way north now, parallel to the coast of uh, Portugal and Spain, but uh, at a distance of 300 nautical miles from them, so about 500 kilometers. So it's a long way away. And we are sailing parallel to the coast, far out because we're going to exploit a high pressure system that we're in now. And that is going to turn uh, in a couple of days time according to the forecast and when it does it'll, uh, we will tack and then we'll sail for another couple of days and then uh, we should be at La Coruña in, uh, in Spain so if that works out it's going to be brilliant I, uh, I hope so that will be a nice ending to a very long passage Hello Phantom Shipmates it's uh, Sunday 7th of June and uh, I'm uh, finally approaching La Coruña. I should arrive there tomorrow evening. All goes well. I have 164 miles left to go. I have sailed up quite far north to uh, 44 degrees uh, 20 minutes uh, north, which is north of Coruña, uh, in order to be able to fall off and uh, sail into La Coruña, even if the wind direction there will be different because the wind typically curves around the tip of Spain. So I have some extra 20 nautical miles or something like that to, uh, to use for change of wind. The last uh, day has been quite challenging sailing-wise. Uh, the wind speed has varied between 10 knots or 8 knots and then uh, up to 24 knots and it's been varying often. Uh, Kaká needs a completely different sail plan for 10 knots and for 20 knots. You need to reef down the main or take it down even with 20 knots and uh, you need to reef the Genoa uh, to, to get stable sailing and uh, if you are sailing at uh, 10 knots you need to have the full sails otherwise you won't get anywhere. So I have lost count of how many times I've reefed the sails in and out during the past uh, 24 hours, so I'm feeling quite tired. Last night I ended, just, ended up just putting, uh, taking the mainsail down, putting uh, a reef in the Genoa and then I went to sleep. When I woke up to a beautiful day, uh, Kaka was uh, literally parked in the Atlantic Ocean. She was hardly moving because the wind had gone. But, so I probably lost about three hours uh, there, but uh, I, had a, I had a nice sleep. So you have to balance things, otherwise uh, you'll wear yourself up. So it's going well, um, and uh, as I say, I hope to arrive finally tomorrow at around 6 p.m. We'll see how it goes. Monday, 8th of June. What a glorious day to arrive in Corona. See land in the distance. Over to Cap de Finisterre over here. So, that's it. Spain in sight. Some shipmates. Today is uh, the twelfth day of the passage from Horta to La Coruña, uh, and uh, what you see behind me, perhaps you don't see it, it would be very small, I suppose, but it's the Tower of Hercules, which is the oldest working lighthouse in the world. It was built in the second century in the Roman era, and is still working today. Uh, we left La Coruña on the 28th of August last year and in the 285 days that have passed since then we have 
sail to the Caribbean and back and it's been a tour from here and back to here of uh, 9,300 and uh, something kilometers. So um, it's great to be back and I can't imagine a more wonderful place uh, to complete a tour around the Atlantic Ocean than the Tower of Orleans. I still have a good way to go from home. I have to cross the Bay of Biscay again, then go up the English Channel and through the Kila Canal and uh, up through the Danish waters and then up. So um, now I'm going to rest for a couple of days, waiting for good weather, and then off to the Bay of Biscay. Hello Phantom Shipmates, it's now 17th of June, I've been in La Coruña for a long time, partly because I had to get another course of antibiotics for my foot, but also because I had a leak in the cooling system of the Volvo engine, so that was fixed today. Uh, so uh, now I've set off in the evening here uh, to cross the Bay of Biscay. There should be a couple of days with good wind and then some days with um, plenty of wind, I would say. So maybe I won't go all the way to Cherbourg, maybe I'll just go to Brest, maybe even shorter depending on the weather. We shall see, but it's wonderful to be back at sea. Hello Phantom Shipmates, Friday 19th of June, around lunchtime. And uh, as you see, I'm going wing on wing. I very rarely do this. It's the sort of thing you always imagine. It's like crossing the Atlantic like this in 14 knots of wind as today. It wasn't like that for me, not going west, not going east. Um, but uh, on the way back here on the Bay of Biscay, it is like uh, that Atlantic crossing dream with a gentle, well, medium breeze, moderate breeze as it's, as it's called. Um, 14 knots of wind and just uh, sailing dead downwind. Uh, it's a glorious day and uh, it's just uh, thoroughly enjoyable. I'm um, a bit anxious to see what's going to happen when I approach, approach Brest because the uh, forecast is that there's going to be quite a bit more wind. But uh, we'll deal that with that with that one when it arrives. For now I'm just enjoying this. Very fast, incidentally. We've been sailing from 8, 9, up to 10 knots on just the mainsail here. We have a lot of Good morning, Phantom Shipmates. Uh, this is my greeting from Cherbourg in France, France where I arrived uh, late last night after four days at sea uh, from a Coruña in Spain. It was uh, quite the adventure uh, getting here. Um, first of all, 
the weather getting into the English Channel was interesting. Uh, they had promised up to 32 knots of uh, wind in the gusts, so I stayed in the cockpit up uh, a couple of hours at night during the worst period where it was raining and blowing like anything. It was a pitch dark night. The only white you could see was the white foam from the, uh, from the waves. Uh, and then the lighthouses on uh, land showing you where you definitely didn't want to go. Um, so <clears throat> I sat through that and didn't get much sleep that uh, night. And then the next day, yesterday, I had to negotiate the currents of the English Channel to get here. And uh, I'm a beginner in sailing in, in strong currents. And I made a really, really stupid mistake, I think, because I sailed into a current that was 5.6 knots strong following currents, thinking this would be great fun. And sure enough, I did clock uh, 12 knots of speed over the ground. But when I then had to ne negotiate the last uh, point de la Hague uh, coming into Cherbourg, all hell broke loose. The water was f boiling. It was like one of these American movies where you see a river just before the waterfall uh, and uh, the hero is fighting to save his life. That's how I felt. Uh, Kaka was tossed ever which way the, uh, the current wanted. Um, and in the end, I, I just started the engine and used the engine and the sails uh, to, um, to get out of that trouble. Uh, but uh, the next time I, uh, I have a place like that to cross, I will look for slack water. That is uh, the period between uh, when the uh, currents are strong. So I learned something yesterday again. Uh, and I'm very happy now to be in uh, Cherbourg. Uh, let's go upstairs. I haven't actually been out of the boat since I, I arrived late last night when it was pitch dark, so I have no idea what this looks like. Let's, ha let's have a look. It's a huge area. You sail for three nautical miles after you enter the outer breakwater just to get into the pontoon where I am now. So I am at the visitor's pontoon. should be able to see it here, together with one other boat. And then it's a huge harbour area. This is the second very big harbour area I see in France. The first one was in Brest going out. They really do not save on space when they do things in France. Big uh, harbours. It's because it's a naval installation as well, I suppose. Lovely morning, lovely morning. Wonderful to be here. So, that's all for now from Cherbourg, France. Pour manger chacun de tête. Et en fait là aujourd'hui le plus grand animé sans masque, enfin c'est beau. Hello Phantom Shipmates, Sunday 28th of June in uh, Oostende, where I arrived uh, last night. Well, you can say a lot of things about this return, uh, return trip, trip from the Caribbean, but boring, <laughs> boring it is not. I left uh, Cherbourg Friday morning. I had everything planned with the tide this time so that I wouldn't get into trouble. And um, the weather forecast said that there would be 18, 19, 20 knots of wind average and then gusting to gusting to 30 which is quite a lot of wind but I thought ah, I can manage it it comes from behind it'll be fine what actually happened was that it was blowing 30 sustained gusting to 44 knots and at that kind of wind the wind vane is uh, having difficulties so I actually had to hand steer for seven hours straight uh, during the worst part and I was absolutely exhausted uh, on top of that, the alternator on the engine uh, for the service batteries uh, didn't work. So I was uh, worried about running out of power. The solar panels did a fantastic job, but I couldn't just put on the electric autopilot. I was afraid I would run out of power. But after that seven hours of hand steering, I was just exhausted and I had to put on the uh, automatic, uh, the electric uh, autopilot to, uh, for the last uh, three hours uh, to Ostende. 
So I ar arrived uh, near Ostende Harbour or port around 10, 1030 in the evening and uh, it was time to turn on the engine and take down the sails and uh, just motor in and get some rest. So I kicked the ignition, ignition on the engine and nothing happened. It was still blowing 24 knots and there was a fairly narrow channel leading into uh, the port. Um, and I had about 30 seconds to decide what to do or I would be past that channel. So I made a quick decision and said, well, if I don't have any engine, I suppose I'll have to sail in on the sails. Uh, so that's what I did. I um, turned the uh, bow towards the entrance and I was now making the have, having the benefit of having planned the currents because I was not pushed away from that mouth very much. I could certainly steer my way in. Uh, I was going with, uh, I rolled up the Genoa and was sailing with two reefs in the mainsail because there was a lot of wind so uh, I wanted to have a speed of two to three knots and, and that worked out fine. As soon as I came through the outer breakwater all the wind disappeared because I was now sheltered. So the worst thing that can happen is that you have no speed inside a harbour. So I quickly uh, rolled up the Genoa and uh, got the boat going again and uh, when you come in on the sails like that, you don't have a lot of uh, trials and errors. Uh, you have to get it right uh, the first time pretty much. So I sailed down to the marina where I had a, a reservation. And uh, I was able to see that there was actually a pontoon that was good for me and where there was vacant space. So I tacked in the middle of the uh, port of the harbour basin. I went through the opening of the marina and, and by this time, you know, it's it's a one-shot deal. You either get it right or, or, or you crash. Um, and I pulled down the sails and at the right moment and uh, shouted at people <laughs> on the bridge, on the pontoon, that I was in need of help. And people came out from the boats very quickly. There were five, six, seven people helping me. And I just made it onto the pontoon bridge. I was going very, very slowly because there was a boat in front of me. So if, if I had too much speed, I would crash into the boat in front of me. But I had a little bit too little speed, actually. But I got there and they were able to uh, grab hold of the boat. I tossed them the lines and they uh, pulled me onto the pontoon. We then had to move the boat manually with lines to another place because this was actually for a ferry. A sort of a, a small ferry, a passenger ferry, so I, I couldn't stay there overnight. But again, the, the people on the pontoon were super helpful. And uh, so now I'm here with no functioning engine, uh, awaiting a mechanic, and uh, we'll see how long I'll be in Ostende, but certainly until the engine is fixed. It's a nice place from, from the look of it, uh, so thanks for the recommendations to those of you who recommended uh, that I go here. It's, it's, it was a good recommendation and it was easy to get into, which was also important in this situation. So, well, <clears throat> that's what it's like to have a sailboat. Sometimes you just uh, have to um, make do with what you have. And uh, I'm so happy to be here uh, without engine to any personnel myself or anybody who helped or any and without any uh, damage done to Kaka or to any of the boats that I, I was also putting in jeopardy by going in on the sail but uh, not a scratch anywhere so um, that was good and I tried to sleep and get catch up on sleep but I was actually so distraught and overtired that uh, I couldn't really sleep so I'm still not really totally with it um, but uh, I'll recuperate um, I'm cleaning the boat, washing, doing the dishes, washing some clothes to, to, to take my mind off of the events of yesterday. And uh, some of the very nice neighbors here have uh, invited me for dinner tonight. So um, people are super nice and friendly and uh, I'm sure it, it'll end up being a, a good experience to visit Ostende. Certainly, I'm glad I didn't stay out in that terrible weather because that was um, quite quite the experience. So. All is well, although uh, a little bit dramatic. Good morning, shipmates. Thursday, 9th of July, 2020. And uh, I've just set out on the journey uh, through the Kiel Canal. 
I arrived last night in Brunsbüttel after two days uh, sailing from um, Emuiden in Holland. I had a, a good trip, a lot of wind the first day, not so much wind the next day. And the big uh, challenge was really hitting the tide of the river Elbe, Elbe correctly, but that worked out well. Uh, so um, I got in without big problems and uh, uh, had a nice rest overnight. And now it's the Kiel Canal and uh, that'll take me to Holtenau and then I'm very close to Danish waters. Hello Phantom Shipmates. It is Friday, uh, 10th of July, and uh, I am now about to pass into Danish waters. I started from Holtenau this morning, and uh, here on the chart plotter, I think that's the territorial border we see right there. And I'm passing into Danish territory now. In style, with uh, seven knots of speed and twelve knots of wind, that was good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 